Hi, it's Sophie for Style Bible, and I'm here with Daniel Galvin Jr. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Sophie. And yourself? Fine, thank you. Now, this is my first trip down to the salon. It's got a very light, airy, comfortable atmosphere here. What was the design brief that you and your wife had when you opened the salon? Well, fortunately, Susanna's an interior designer, um, and we wanted something very fresh, something very uplifting. We wanted our ladies to feel like they were at home when they came here um, and feel that it was a very personalised service. Um, so therefore they feel relaxed and not like they're on a conveyor belt and you know most of these workstations in most salons are sort of run off the mill so it's all standard stuff whereas what our clients love about it here not only is it very relaxing and uh, they find it very personal. In terms of the products you use here what what was the plan for that was it always going to be organic based? Uh, well yes I mean organic is my heritage and uh, you know as you know I pioneered organic beauty some 12 years ago now um, obviously, uh, organic ingredients more and more increasing, so becoming available to us. Um, so we're continuing to push boundaries. What we've launched now is Double Trouble for Kids and Organic Head for um, the Adults. Was being the dad the main thing that kind of spurred you on to start this product line? Do you think it was? And initially, I came out with the baby line when my son was first born, and and obviously as he's getting older, we're progressing with different new products and sort of getting boys and kids into a shower it's not always the easiest thing, so you want to make it as fun as possible. So what we've created here is um, a product that's organic and natural, and it's, it's a, it's a two-in-one. Um, so it's a, hair, it's a shampoo and body wash, which is great. So it's very easy, one product, not two. Um, the pH balance is wonderful. It's very gentle for kids and, you know, sort of very young kids. From three, target age, three to 13. Um, for boys, probably girls at about 12, probably will start using their mum's products. Um, we also have a detangling spray, which is great for the mornings before school, so it's, it's devised to be used on wet or dry hair. Um, and what we really wanted to create was bringing organics to the masses. Um, and so these really are value with Epic products. And what's been the feedback been from your kids personally to you about oh, the product? He's, he's really enjoyed He helped me sort of sampling them and smelling them and try and testing them, as did his friends. Um, and the feedback's been sensational. They do smell a lot like puddings. Mm -hmm. For instance, the Cherry Bomb, which is the number one seller at the moment through Morrison's Nationwide. Um, that's, you know, you smell that, you think of Cherry Bakewell and, and things like that immediately. Good enough to eat. Good enough to eat. Banana Berry, which is my son's favorite, that uh, smells more like sort of banana custard. And these essences always have a sense of place. And you know, these ones, like the melon, it reminds you of being a kid on holiday, eating that, putting your head in that watermelon and smelling it, which is fantastic. And why did you choose to partner with Morrison's? Morrison's, they really, I, I love their, their work ethic, um, the, way they're, the way they're positioning themselves in the market now, and how they've embraced this project with Morrison's beauty team. Um, I've worked with beauty teams in many different companies, a second to none. They've totally got everything that it encompassed, um, from the heritage of it, from supporting the Prince's Trust. They also, all their meats and everything is... is uh, uh, their cows, they graze at Dumfries House, which is in Scotland, which is HRH's property yeah. and land. So, th and that that meat goes straight to Morrison. So it's not third party stuff, which is great. So they really want to support the Prince's Trust, and there are partners in this. So we're donating a massive 25k per annum with Morrison's to the Prince's Trust, which gets kids into education, um, employment, and contributes to them staying in hostels and clothing and all all, all of those things. So really, they were just they were a perfect perfect partnership. Um, and uh, they're fully behind it, fully supportive. Um, yeah, so it's exciting. I think a member of your staff was it an apprentice, wasn't wasn't she on the Princess Trust scheme? Is that right? That's, that's right. So yeah. We yeah. have um, a program at our here called Head Start. Um, we took, we had two taster days. We had 22 kids, and I was wondering what I was going to see. And we had sat them all around the table. I came into work. And all of them, um, I was quite overwhelmed that like products of the beauty business, they all sat there, they were very attentive. I mean, in the beauty business, not the ugly business. So even just a little bit of makeup goes a long way sometimes. Yeah. Um, and they all had makeup, their hair looked fantastic, their attire looked fantastic. I get some of these kids from school that come in and you say they sit and slouch in their chair and their hair, and I say, says, what's your dream? And they're like, oh, I don't know. But these kids really, Wanted it. Chomping at the bit for it, and they've been so loyal. I actually chose seven. I was supposed to choose four. I'm a bit of a softie. <laughs> and um, two of those are Maui, uh, Sammy Joe, um, Aaron, who's now become a young ambassador to Prince of Trust, and he was very challenging. Um, he had a lot of over ba uh, barriers to overcome. He's, he's autistic, um, so his everything in his life was really magnified. But you know, I was so proud of all of them. 
Um, and out of the seven that we chose, we've got five big success stories. So I think that's a pretty good ratio. You must, be really, you must feel proud to see their journey, mustn't you, at the so end of it? So proud and so, you know, delighted to have been a part of that journey with them. And that's part of the wonderful thing about the magic that the Prince's Trust has. Um, the more you do and the more, more the benefits and gains you see these kids have, the more you want to do. So increasingly so, I'm investing more and more time with them, almost a day a week. You were in your 20s when you kind of started your organic lifestyle, so what spurred that? Um, I think my, 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 through my 20s I was very sort of chemical based um, and extremely chemical based, so much that I had to source, uh, sort of help myself um, being invited to all these parties at such a young age. and. Um, I went down a very dark path, um, the point really almost a no return. So I was fortunate enough to manage to, you know, and strong enough to manage just about to sort my life out and got given a second chance, and which is why I, I uh, you know, became very, well, I went from very chemical living to very organic living. And obviously organic food then, I was really on, on you know, it was, a, it was just a, really a barrow in the supermarkets mm. where you source your vegetables and your chickens. So there wasn't much then, and I watched that grow into four aisles long, 40 feet long and four shelves high within the space of 18 months, which I found, I found, you know, rather overwhelming. So I thought, hang on a second, I'm at the forefront of my industry. You know, what can I do? I've changed my life around and I'm loving all this organic food. So I started picking these products off the shelf and I was looking at the inky list, these inky lists all in Latin. So when I broke these inky lists down, we found that, you know, there's some horrible chemicals in there. And the consumers just don't understand things like sodium lauryl sulfates, parabens, these things that people are so much more aware of now and increasingly so, um, of the, the side effects and the consequences of uh, long term use of them. Parabens, for instance, with guys who really clog up the pores in the scalp and your hair loss, and for girls, sodium lauryl sulfates and these can give you acne in teenagers. Um, so really that's the reason I, I went to organic actually because um, I had enough of chemicals so now sort of get me to take a paracetamol that's about as far as I go with chemicals <laughs> these days. A um, good change. A great change, yeah, I enjoy my cider on the weekends and, and whatever <laughs> and enjoy my boxing during the week so yeah, I have a good balanced life. But when you first said to people you wanted to do the organic thing, because it wasn't trendy then as it is now, did you have people going, are you sure, do you really care that much, do you really want to do this? Are you sure I didn't speak to you back then? <laughs> Skeptical. <laughs> Skeptical. No, it was. I um. There was there was so many, and there was one journalist that really believed in it, and that was Josephine Fairley, um, Green and Blacks, and she's a lovely lady. And everybody else said, no, there's no, I don't think there's any future in organic beauty. But when you're really passionate and you believe in something life enough, you know you're going to make it happen. You know, so we kept the dream alive. We pushed forward people like Josephine, people like yourself, that educate the consumers into the benefits, the gains of using natural and organic beauty products. Um, educate the consumers and the consumers, and, you know, believe you guys, and, you know, not necessarily me, they're reading the magazines and you guys write kindly about it and people will buy into it and then they start to enjoy, realise, hang on a second, these shampoos are not stripping the colour from my hair, they're, they're not giving me dandruff or dry scalp and, um, and, and really reap the rewards from that. Do you get a lot of people coming in the salon saying that's the primary reason they came to see you because they've heard about what you do with organic products? Or? We have a lot of people that come in the salon uh, to see me because of my heritage and pioneering organic beauty and a lot of people that really support that avenue and, then, and have been on that journey. Um, and obviously organic is pushing more and more boundaries all the time. I've I have clients that sit in my chair and say, Daniel, I've, I've, I've come to see you because I know, you know my hair's in bad condition and I'm, you know, you use very gentle products. Of course, for salon colours, we have to use gentle chemicals, but we do infuse um, certain essential oils. We do dilute our chemicals down with waters. A lot of our, our chemical processes are off scalp, so they're not going into the body or being absorbed by the body. Um, but then, of course, they're buying organic products and everything else. So we can take somebody from having very sort of Baywatch blonde to sun-kissed babe hair within months within months and of course our clients we give them homework to do you've got to go home and you know we tell you how to get salmon effect uh, uh, treatments at home and you know for instance using a, a damp towel in the microwave um, when you're bathing put it in a plastic bag whilst you're having a bath put your treatments on wrap your hair in it and you'll get a salmon professional treatment that way at home cracking tip yeah <laughs> sure now, when I was researching you, because I, I had these illusions that it was all glamour, celebrities, that it was just this perfect life for you, but I was reading that you didn't necessarily want to be a hairdresser all the time. You had visions of being a journalist, being a footballer. Now, 
in 2012, are you happy with it where you are? Are you happy in your situation? Oh, yeah, no, there's no skeletons in my closet, is there? <laughs> I don't. Um, I'm, I'm very happy. I think, um, yeah, of course, I went to Helen back, being in the family business in the early days. I mean, we've got four generations of Galvins here yeah. um, to present time to, to myself. Um, so, of course, there's a lot of peer pressure. And in the early days, I went to Helen back with my dad. I have a very good, healthy relationship with him now. It's great that I'm, I'm out, you know, I've been out on my own, doing my own thing for some time. I've been doing in the industry for 28 years. I, um, yeah, I, I always, I can write, I can do journalism in later life um, when I've got time to do it. And I do enjoy writing. I went to boarding school, and I suppose, when I came back to do my journalism course, and my father was fed up with me asking for pocket money. He said, come in the salmon and sweep up the hair and make some teas and whatever. I thought, oh, how boring, you know, being, being a grumpy teenager. I was like, oh, okay, Dad. Um, I saw these, these amazing looking women, I saw this colour going on and I was always into um, art at school and I thought well you know what Dan, I thought your, your friends are going to, you know, got aspirations of becoming hedge funders and bankers and you know, if, if you try journalism now and you don't like it and you're hairdressing and you start shampooing at age 21 they'll be having a real laugh. I thought start, start now, give it a three year apprenticeship, if you don't like it you can still go and do your journalism of course, so here I am. No regrets, so basically. Later. No, not at all. I hear that you might have an adult line in the offing. Can you tell me more about that, or is it top secret at the moment? I am. Um, how soon is this going live? I can delay it or do it quickly, whatever you prefer. Well, the adult range is going to be launched on the uh, 28th of um, October. Um, we have an adult range called Organic Head, um, and again, it's a salon. It's a salon professional range. And um, that's all I can tell you really at the moment. But that encompasses things like argon treatments um, infused with wheat proteins, with, um, with gloss, with adhesive polymers that stick to the hair, which make the hair shine like glass. I mean, this product, I mean, we, we do have them customised in the salon. Um, we've got a page in the mail saying treatment of the month because, I mean, this product really does perform. It is second to none. And that's something I really pride myself on is if I write something on our packaging, on the front, we say this hair, this, this this product will make your hair shiny. This product will give your hair volume. You can rest assured it does. And I know a lot of people think, oh, here's a hairdresser giving all the spill. You know, we've heard it all before. Well, let's see. But seeing is believing. So, and that's why I've got a page in the mouth. Have to give it a whirl. Okay, yeah. I've got some we'll style. We'll try one new after today. Maybe I'll, I'll film the um, the after look and see if it's actually worked. Afterwards, yeah. <laughs> this is the before. Like glass, yeah. <laughs> Now I've got some set style, bi style, style bible questions that I ask everyone. They're quick fire ones. Are you ready? Okay, your style icon. My style icon. Hmm. Quick fire. <laughs> style icon. Under <laughs> pressure. That's terrible. I mean, I don't, no, really, I've always been very individual. I, 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 I suppose, um, I don't know. Um, I can't think of one, sorry. Okay, favourite designer? Is that, um, uh, Tom Ford. Good choice. Okay, favourite bar in London? My favourite bar in London is probably. I like. Uh, so that's going to go my favourite bar in London. <laughs> I like the pub. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Homely. I like, the pub. I like the Star Tavern here yeah. around the corner in Belgravia. Okay. Uh, favourite hotel? Favourite hotel has to be. I probably like the, I like the Barclay. I like um, I like Anushka Hempel. Um, I like um, I like yeah. I like the Barclay. What can't you travel without? I can't travel without my book, and I can't travel without my BlackBerry. Favorite beauty product? Or grooming product, I should. Say. I'm not. I'm. I'm. Uh, I don't use an awful lot. I. Um, Favorite grooming products probably I, I use one of the kids double trouble. I take boxing. I take to the gym in the morning. It's easy. It's hair and body wash. It's I'm mean, like the cucumber one. It's just it's a nice essence. Nice and fresh. That one. Yeah, it's fresh. I'm coming to work smelling of cherries and stuff. But <laughs> it's <laughs> my um, yeah. I'm quite basic when it comes to beauty, really. Um, yeah. So I think actually I have a client of mine, um, Georgia. She makes me up a, a, a sort of real special face cream. Um, you know, I'm 42 now. I'm not getting any younger. She says, and it is lovely actually. I do love that. Um, and it's really, it, she can buy that online. It's just, she's brilliant, Georgia. Um, and I just put a bit on my cheeks after boxing in the morning. Simple. So, easy, yeah. Okay. Best secret in your little black book? What have I 
I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> Come on, share. <laughs> Tease it out of you. Best secret in my little back book. Yeah, you're going to have to dig a bit deeper then, try a bit harder, and give you a secret. Oh, um, can I bribe you in some way? <laughs> give a bad review of the hair later. <laughs> okay. That's very cheeky. It's um, working, is it? Best secret in my little black book. Um, I've, well, I've got, I've got lots of little secrets in mind for Black Book. I think, um, I think really, sort of happy wife, happy life. Um, it's, it works well for me. Mum's happy, the whole family are happy. Um, what else do I have for Black Book? I think, um, yeah. Solid rule, I think. Yeah, I think, and, and also I think, you know what, I, having a clear conscience, being true to yourself, that's, that always works well. Um, yeah, if other people are un unhappy about maybe something that you feel good about, that's their problem, not yours. I think just uh, always stick to your own guns. I need to take that on a bit more, I think. I'll remember that. Well, well people deal with, can always deal with the truth in life. Unfortunately, yeah. sometimes it's not what they want to hear, but they deal with it, they get on with it, or get over it. Yeah. Okay. Most recently played on your iPod? Uh, guns and Roses. Oh. Which one? It's the, the Guns at Sweet Child of Mine. Classic. Uh, take Me Down to the Paradise City. I love, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I like ACDC, I like old school rock, Bon Jovi, um, yeah. Let's Can't see. fault that. Yeah. Okay. Are you a social network fiend? Do you love Twitter and all of that, or have you avoided it? Well, I'm, I'm starting to become a bit more afraid with it, and it's only with the launch, relaunch of the new products and everything, and the power of Twitter, and obviously I have a lot of clients and from all walks of life, and you know, celebrity clients as, as well, they say, oh, we tweeted about it yesterday, and I'm like, okay, great, I'll check that out, I have no idea what I'm doing. All of a sudden, I find that we have all these different people following us on Twitter, and so yeah, um, the Twitter. You know, I love it. Twitter's great. I've now sort of really sort of getting a handle on it, and it's quite a powerful tool. And quite addictive. Quite addictive, yeah. I, I never realised it had the reach that it did like instantly. It's, uh, yeah. Now, can you just give me some hair trends, maybe for autumn, winter, or ones that you see emerging for next year? Sure. I think with I think coming into autumn, winter, people always need, always need to have a seasonal change. Um, Blondes should always go brighter for the winter. Um, so coming back from the sun, it's wonderful to have that sun-kissed hair and everything. But and unfortunately, though, when your tan fades and your hair's all washed out and it's solid, it can tend to make you feel a bit drained. So it's important to use hair colour as a cosmetic. Having a seasonal change, you change the colour of your clothes, you change your makeup, but you still want to do the same with your hair. And I, th I would suggest doing reverse lighting, which is weaving some of your natural colour sometimes back through the hair after the summer because it can become quite uniform. And if you've got a wonderful mane, you've got a uniform colour, people don't know you've got a wonderful mane. So you need to create movement, contrast, um, and, put, and feed the hair, really work on the integrity of your hair. Argan treatment. Everyone's talking about argan oil. It's huge, isn't it? It's, it's massive, and it really has a huge, huge you know, immediate effect on, on your hair. Um, ours is, of course, inf infused with wheat proteins and amino acids. Amino acids building blocks of life. Mm. Uh, with brunettes, again, I love, I love, you know, the sun-kissed look. Keep it sun-kissed. Keep the tips in the hair. If they've been cut out and you've had your first haircut, we can do. You can weave colours into it. It's not like dip dyeing. It's called tipping. Okay. So you weave those sun-kissed bits back into the hair, and you create that movement. Uh, the brunettes this this uh, this winter are being much cooler. Uh, we we infuse um, certain blue powders into our formulas here, uh, which kill any orange, kill any red. So it really allows us to maximise in those cool chocolate brunettes. Okay, okay. And just to finish up now, what are your plans for the next year? Hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams. God, give us fuel, don't they? I don't know without them, where would we be? It's always about keeping the dream alive. I think um, next year we're looking to open up another, another salon um, in, in England and also in uh, the Middle East. Um, we have you know, so many clients that fly from the Middle East and I'm increasingly sending my staff out there to do people's hair and whatever, so we need to have a, a base over there. Uh, next year, a uh, new men's range. Um, we're working with um, and a really, really exciting project on, on a or new organic range uh, for somebody else. Uh, I can't tell you who that person is yet. We'll have secrets today. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but you can just keep digging. <laughs> um, but that one is, um, it, it will be brilliant. That will consume a lot of my time next year. So next year, it's, it's gonna, we're going to be you know, up against the wall again. That's how time. I like it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you very much. Look forward to my new hair. No, fantastic. No, it's been a pleasure, Sophie. Thanks for having me down. Yeah, good. Well, seeing is believing, so hope you, you enjoy it. <laughs>